Now, let's talk about history of programming language. And what is that, right? You will be amazed to see that how programming used to happen. So I think we all understand now that CPU is just doing some work. And by the way, I, I forgot to define the terms. So whatever the instructions which CPU knows, load, store, right? Whatever the manual which comes with the CPU, which defines what CPU is uh, can uh, what CPU is capable of, right? What it can do in terms of the instructions, right? This manual is known as the instruction set, right? It could be different for Intel and maybe different for another processor, AMD, or maybe for another processor. This instruction set is different, and that is why we can we can say that different CPU works differently. Very, very interesting concept. But try to understand at the end of the day, what CPU is going to execute whatever is written into its instruction set. It means that if memory is providing it or CPU is fetching information from the memory or the instruction of the memory, if that instruction is inside the instruction set, then it is going to execute because it understands that instruction. Otherwise, it will say, no, I do not know what you are asking what do you want me to do? I do not know about it, right? Because that is not part of my instruction set. If that is the case, it is not going to do anything. Otherwise, if the instruction match, it is going to do whatever the manual says. It is as simple as that. And, you, and as you all know, whatever you write here, this is your program. And believe me, people in 1970s era, they used to write these four instructions if they want to write the program ad. But here is my problem. It is good that you can write this ones and zeros sequence by putting a lot of hard work on a piece of paper. But how you are going to tell memory that this is my program? How this ones and zeros you are going to move from your paper to memory? Because at the end of the day, CPU is not going to read the paper. CPU is going to read the memory. CPU takes instructions from the memory so when we say i have a written paper where i have written a program this program is not in the memory right when this program goes into the memory then basically cpu is going to fetch it and execute it otherwise not so to begin with when we talk about 1960s era right there were some uh, there were uh, uh, there were piece of papers right which were known as punch cards and the meaning of punch card were that these were the papers which were used to feed these programs whatever we write on the paper right into the memory for example if you see here that we have a punch hole into this paper as a white one right computer understand this punch is at zeros and if we do not write that if we do not have the punch on that line then basically there is one and there is an hardware which is actually there with the computer which can read this paper so basically maybe you can understand how that hardware works it will it will literally find the holes in that paper to find where the zero is written and if it doesn't find the hole it means that it's one right so this way computer were able to read the zeros and ones from the human beings right and from this card reader they can fill the memory very very interesting right but the important part is you need to write everything in ones and zeros and even more difficult once you write it down you need to punch the holes where the zeros are and try to understand how much difficult the programming was at that point of time for maybe you are not going to add only two numbers maybe your program is complex and maybe it is going to have 100 lines of code or 100 lines of binary code maybe if that is the case you can see that you can write 10 lines here and for the 100 lines of code you need 10 papers and then you need to punch those papers once you punch those papers you need to <laughs> give it to the punch card reader and then those 100 instructions can go into the memory so that cpu can fetch them from the memory and start doing its work very very interesting right and very very difficult too 
and don't don't uh, uh, presume that this might be my means people uh, uh, could have done this for one year or two year no people were doing the same thing for 10 years and then people understand that there is a better way right it is very easy to judge now but during that day people were doing this thing the punch card and maybe some improved punch cards for literally 10 years try to understand how hard programming was right and when we say programming is hard it is not that hard believe me then somebody says no it is not an appropriate way of doing programming maybe we should write something we should do some good work right so that we have this program written into a language which is more closer to us than computer these ones and zeros are more closer to computers we can't get much information out of them by just seeing them maybe there is a logic but we can't see that right so we need to develop a uh, a language right so that we do not write we do not want to write in this ones and zeros so that we should not write right because if we are writing it in the ones and zeros basically it is more closer to the computer not closer to us somebody suggested we should not do this way we need to develop something which is more closer to us and that is why somebody built this load a5 now i can get some meaning out of it right the meaning is basically load from computer's memory whatever is written on the fifth location to register a now i understand what cpu is doing now right not from 101000101 right then add it is more closer to me because i understand what is the meaning of add i understand what is the meaning of store now here i am saying store a maybe to a memory location number 7 right here right very very interesting so this language which is more closer to us right if it is more closer to us i can write program much more easy as compared to ones and zeros i do not need this punch card now but the important piece is i need now a person because at the end of the day what cpu is going to execute ones and zeros what memory memory is going to take ones and zeros and now i have written program in my language load load add and store i can understand it memory and cpu can't so there must be somebody who is going to convert this load a5 into 101100 right add to this store to this and if this is a human being then it's again a problem right maybe one guy came and write program into this but the problem of this guy is going to be really really difficult right his job is to take load statement and then convert into ones and zeros now it's a problematic but what if it's not a human being it is another program which is converting your languages which are more closer to you into the languages which is more closer to the computer if that is the case it is going to be great but it should not be human being now somebody suggested now even i do not like even this because this is not making much sense to me and if there is the case somebody is saying i will write a program into a language which is even more closer to me ones and zeros are not closer to me at all not closer to human beings load a5 load b6 add store i do not know what is the name of this language i will let you know but for sure it is more closer to me than ones and zeros and somebody is now saying i will write something in a language which i can understand which is even simpler than load and add and store it statement and that is why he has written a complete different language it is saying there are two numbers number 1 which is value 20 number 2 the value is 30 and now i am adding some number 1 plus number 2 right and then i am printing the sum 2 just forget about the uh, syntax of this language but try to understand this is more closer to us anybody can see this anybody can understand that now we are trying to add two numbers but by just seeing these ones and zeros if you put some hard work definitely you can come to know that this is adding two numbers but without doing much hard hard work you can say that this language is making more sense but now here is my problem it is even more closer to the human being if it is more closer to the human being it is not 
understandable by CPU or memory, specifically CPU. If that is the case, then we need this guy who can convert this program into again ones and zeros, right? And as I mentioned, that this uh, this human being is quite sophisticated. It is going to be great if this human being is also a program. So what we are going to do? We are going to write a program. Then there is another program who is going to convert this program into ones and zeros. What is the benefit of overall thing? The benefit is that we are we are able to interact with this CPU in our own language. I am writing a simple program in my language, not in English because English is uh, something which we cannot write the program in. And I will let you know why, right? But there is somebody who has created this language which is more closer to me and I am writing the programs into it, right? At the end of the day, what I'm doing with this program, I will be guiding CPU. Although there are a number of steps now in the middle, there is a program or this person who is going to convert the ones, uh, this uh, high level program into ones and zeros, or basically this uh, language, which is more closer to me into ones and zeros, right? Then these ones and zeros are going to be into the memory and from the memory, it is going to the CPU and CPU is going to execute them, right? Although the steps are increased, but I am, able to instruct cpu in a language which is closer to me i'm not saying it is it is going to be ones and zeros right very very interesting so this is the history behind how programming languages evolved previously it is ones and zeros then basically this load and a5 load a5 store and then basically we have this language which is more closer to us right very very interesting. But what are the names of these languages? It is very very interesting to know the names of these languages, which I'm going to explain you on the next board, which is right here. So you all know that we have these ones and zeros, which have basically some specific meaning to the CPU. If we write everything in ones and zeros, then the program language in which I'm writing is actually the machine language. And basically it is pretty clear to me why it is machine language. The reason is it is more closer to machine and that is why machine language, right? Now somebody came and then say that basically it is more human friendly and this language is known as assembly language. But it is very, very important to understand there must be a program which is going to convert this assembly language to machine language. We are going to understand what is the name of that program in next board. But at the end of the day, CPU is going to work with ones and zeros. It is not going to understand what is the meaning of load A5. And that is why we need some program which is going to convert these four instructions into these ones and zeros so that CPU and CPU can understand it, right? So basically machine language is your binary language, which is more closer to the CPU. Assembly language is one step closer to us. It is not that difficult as machine language. I'm not saying binary is difficult. I'm saying it is difficult to understand binary for a human being. Now let's talk about the third thing, which is here, right? This is actually the programming language, which is more closer to us than even assembly languages. And if that is the case, we call such languages as high level language. One such language was developed in 1980 by a guy called Rossum, and we were talking about that in the last class. And this guy has developed a language which is a Python. Believe me, very, very simple language. Why? Because it's a high level language. Just try to understand if we are today, I, 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 we, we just started a programming language, right? And I said, you need to code in ones and zeros. See, our motivation to learn the programming is pretty low to begin with. And if somebody says that you need to program in ones and zeros, then that motivation is gone. Absolutely zero. Nobody's going to do this, right? But believe me, we are in much, much better condition now. Maybe the future of programming is way easier than this in upcoming time, right? Maybe. Uh, basically, with a simple English language, you can talk, and this is happening right now, right? You give commands to Alexa, and it works, right? You you can talk to ChatGPT, and it works, because now it is taking commands 
from in simple language simple english also and it is a, it, it is another level of innovations right but right now what we are talking about is that we have the python language which is more closer to us and such languages are known as high level languages so your c c++ your python ruby all these languages are high level languages and why because they are more closer to us any language which is more closer to human being is the high level language and which is closer to machine is the machine language anything which is in the middle is the assembly language just like this it is absolutely simple concept and with that i would like to take a pause here and i would like to ask do you guys have any doubt till whatever we understood now till now anybody okay this is good i think supreet has a question yeah mr supreet please do ask anything whatever comes to your mind yeah vishnu so basically when we talk about this binary thing now uh, let's say for example in today's world when when we write a script on any specific machine whether it's windows or linux uh does that script uh, get converted into binary and then then it gets pushed towards our network devices or whatever we're trying to automate no so basically uh, uh what is going to happen is wherever your script is running right there actually it is going to convert for example if you are running uh, uh, a script on the linux machine suppose or the windows machine if you run it then basically it is executed by cpu of this machine only okay but that is that is for sure this much this script is going to be converted into ones and zeros it will be loaded into the memory and cpu is executing it maybe in the first step you are writing that ssh into this ip address 1.1.1.1 who is going to execute this your cpu which cpu this linux machine cpu but where the instruction is uh, where is going uh, this instruction is going to be executed it is maybe your machine is going to uh, initiate a ssh connection toward this file right sorry toward this device which is 1.1.1.1 now you can now there is a, a terminal or remote access session which is established between your linux machine and this machine now you can send commands over it right so i'm not saying that whatever uh, so whatever the script you are running it is going to ex be executed on this machine but yes this machine can send some commands to this router or switch maybe via netcom maybe via ssh or whatever right then the effect of this script can be on this router and switch do you get get it mr supreet uh so basically i'm trying to understand over here is now now let's say for example i write a script saying that hey i need to have an ssh access to 1.1.1 as we explained over here right now uh -huh. so how does a cpu knows that it has to convert that ssh word a specific three letters s s s that into uh, zeros and binary can we or it is hard coded uh, predefined in the cpu itself that we will talk about it do in... not worry and the next okay. board next okay. board is totally dependent on that do not worry okay. about okay. it thank you vishnu okay. yes so basically i'm trying to understand how exactly the scripts work when we are trying to execute from a specific and there machine is, to there is the device. there is the whole sole purpose there is the whole and that is why i didn't jump directly into the python variables and something i want you to understand okay. i want you to understand when you run a special script or any script or any program what exactly happens in your machine so if you in that frame of mind and if you see try to understand if you if you uh, if you know the meaning of memory that what it is doing right if you know the meaning of cpu now you can appreciate well that actually whatever i i am writing it is going into the memory and cpu is executing and fetching it right and if something goes down right if something is not working for example suppose you need to write print something right and writing print you just forget to write t and basically write print and something right what had just happened the program the problem is the guy who was converting this print statement into 10 this guy can be human being but this guy can be a program he understand that if it is a print statement we need to convert it into something ones and zeros right which the cpu is going to understand but he doesn't understand the meaning of print because t is missing and that is why you are going to see error that Be, your program cannot be run maybe you have made some mistake and then you debug this program pro, uh, program the whole sole point is that you should understand that how your program or the script is executed behind the scene what exactly happening in the memory of the computer in the cpu of the computer or what are the various 
programs which are coming into picture it is just not it is just not your program which is working it is various other programs also working to execute your program and i will let you know in the next poll having said that i am very uh, feeling good i i am really feeling good that now there are some questions mr rahul kandhelwal please do ask any question whatever you have i have two questions vishnu uh, first one is uh, i need your help to understand a little bit more difference between assembly language and high level language okay so first and my second question is with the previous page okay so let's let's finish the assembly language first right so basically the journey from this 1010 mr rahul to this high level level language it it was actually step by step right it was not that previously you were used uh, you were using those punch cards right to fill this memory with these ones and zeros and then straight away you you come here no it was not like that so basically this was the just the intermediate step so i am saying one zeros were not closer to the humans but yes by seeing load a5 load 8 add store jump statement i think you can simply understand the meaning right that what this program is doing believe me there are some computer programs or maybe some of the games are totally written in this assembly language people are literally saying load this from memory load because i will be giving this instruction into the memory and then you are saying directly cpu that basically these are the things which you need to do but at the end of the day these are going to be converted into this because cpu is going to understand ones and zeros whatever you write doesn't matter so the whole soul point uh, of can we say assembly is uh, sorry uh, so interrupted uh, can we say assembly is uh, some sort of an uh, interpreter language intermediate language you can say intermediate language between high level language and the machine language that interpreter and compiler i am coming into that just leave it just just uh, uh, send it away from uh, from your mind we will talk about them that where those are going to come into picture okay Okay, but uh, in the high level, we have the language like C, C plus plus, right? Yes. So, any any example for assembly language? Assembly language. This one is basically low, and this that is specifically based on uh, the CPU architecture. But what is the name of any assembly language? I will let you know. Maybe I have forgot to include it. I do not know. And the reason is because nobody does programming in assembly language. But yes, there are many languages which are assembly language. If you write onto your uh, PC, right, or the Google, they, those are going to give you. But that language is not human friendly that is the whole soul point but that is more human friendly than ones and zeros okay mr rao okay perfect now the second question is on the previous board you said yes yeah so uh, the the program you have already written in the memory on the on the location 0 1 2 and 3 right yeah so 0 was 20 1 was 30 the third one was add and the last one where we were storing the information yeah. but i didn't understand the purpose of 5 and 6 this basically uh, if you say in third statement if you say the, in the first statement right first statement is only saying load uh, a with 5 right load a what is the meaning of load a the meaning of load a was that there is a register name as a it should be loaded it should be loaded with what right so you need to define a memory location and you need to fill that memory location with the data i do not want to make thing complex and that is why i am choosing a decimal number although it should be also ones ones and zeros so basically load means you need to load your register a but with what value you are because at the end of the day your program is of no meaning if it is not adding your defined values right so whatever i am doing here is very very uh, what we can say uh, very very simplified version of how cpu works but this should be the the thing which you should start and the remaining curiosity can be can be talked about or can be googled right but to begin with what i am saying here is that the meaning of load a5 is load register a but load register a with anything which is written here and this is my operand operand means that if i want to add 40 plus 30 then this is the operator means this is doing some action this action plus is uh, has to done on two different values right maybe this is 40 this is 30 so i have installed first value here third value here and then i am saying load a5 the meaning is load a with uh, with memory location 5 and load uh, b with memory location 6 am i making any sense to you mr rahul yeah perfect and 
I would say watch this video again and again unless you get all the questions, whatever you have in your mind. If because see, this is a problem in our engineering education system also, right? And why I'm saying this? Just take an example. If we talk about our engineering days, right? We have one subject which talk about electrical engineering, right? Where we talk about electric current, then basically uh, so many things like transistors, so many circuits. We talked about them, right? Then there is another uh, uh, there is another subject which is digital electronics, where we were talking about these NAND gates, AND gates, right? And how these values are going to be stored. For example, try to means if you are philosophical in nature, then you must be thinking that how at the how on the earth. I can store these values ones and zeros into computer memory or basically the register or A and B, whatever we are talking about, right? Then this digital electronic subject was solving this problem. Electrical engineering subject was solving circuits problem, how actually the current is flowing, because at the end of the day, your CPU is just nothing. It has the it has many circuits available inside it, right? And at last, there is a computer architecture which subject which talks about uh, basically how CPU works and, and, and so on, right? Arithmetic, arithmetic logic unit, control unit, and so much, right? So the problem is with the system is that we have read all these subjects, but there was nobody who was combining all of them together to make a computer, right? Or to make a computer. If we combine these subjects, believe me, then we can understand the computer. Otherwise, it is very, very difficult, very, very uh, uh, hard to understand how a computer works. Everybody, every engineer says that it works on the principle of the ones and zeros. Do we really understand what these ones and zeros are? Do we really understand how these are going to be stored, right? But maybe it is not required. Maybe we, we just go and, uh, and do the programming. But my approach is slightly, slightly different because if you understand the nitty gritties of the computer, and that is why the whole soul idea is whenever I, I explained you Linux, I explained how what operating system is actually and how it interacts with the CPU. And now we are talking about what our programming language are and how they interact with the CPU, right? So, and that is why the whole sole reason is that if you are learning something new, just be curious, whatever comes to your mind, just do not suppress it. Even the question is that much simpler than why the sky is blue. And believe me, if you do not know about it, just try to search it. Okay, being philosophical, being love to wisdom. I mean, if, if you are somebody who has uh, loving the wisdom or knowledge, then it is going to be great. You are going to be uh, 